the Dice Tower is proud to present the modern table gamer, Peter Kraus. There's another thing you can do with troops. Let's say your enterprise that your troop is extorting or protecting, it gets nationalized. And nationalized means it gets discarded. What happens to your troop? Well, they either get discarded or they can retreat back to your hacendado. Your Hasendado card starts loyalty side up. When it's loyalty side up, you have a special ability and you also have two income cubes because you're loyal to uh, President Diaz. The two circumstances when you can flip your Hasendado is one, when you're retreating your troops. The troops can retreat to your Hasendado only if they match one of the colors that's on the other side. And basically you're going to partner with those troops, they're going to protect you, and you're going to get a prestige point for whichever color you partner with. The other time you can flip your Hacendado is when you topple. During a topple, you're going to have the option to flip over your Hacendado. When you flip your Hacendado, you're going to lose your income cubes and you lose your special ability. So what happens when there's a depression? Depression starts when two headline cards are discarded in a row with a red bear on them. When that happens, you take a blue chip and place it on the regime card to indicate that right now we have depression. In this case, mines and the economy would all go to zero. Any mines out there, take off your cubes, they go to zero. Economy for a bank, that would go to zero as well. The other penalty that happens along with mines being zero and the economy being zero is that any t cards that you have in play, you have to pay one gold for at the end of your income phase. If you can't afford to keep those cards in play and those cards get discarded, depression hurts. Porfirio Diaz can help.
Juan Luis Terrazas is going to go to the market and purchase a card using one action. And this is in the zero cost column. So he can just pick it up and take it to his hand. Now the second action on this one is he's going to pay the cost of it and play this card. This is a three cost ranch. So he's going to spend three and then put that out in his play area. Leaves him with one gold. He's a starting player, so he gets four gold. Second player gets five gold, six gold, seven gold. Oops. He gets a start income cube on his ranch. It's got one on there. So that's gonna generate income during his income phase. But for his third action, he's gonna speculate. He's looking at this Banditos card out here. This one could potentially hurt his ranch pretty bad. So he's gonna assume that someone's gonna buy it. He's gonna put a speculation cube on there. That way if someone buys that card, rather than the money going to the bank, he'll get the money. After he's done using his actions, um, no headline cards to discard in this column. So then the market just refreshes itself. All the cards slide down and become cheaper here and then a new card comes out which is another headline card uh, so we got two headline cards out last thing on his turn is he collects income for the amount of cubes he has in play he's got two because he's still loyal to porfirio diaz and then he has one on his ranch so he gets three gold from the bank i'd say buying that ranch for zero gold was probably great to be the first player so we move on to clockwise here over to Pascual Orozco, right here. Now Pascual, his specialty is he can buy orange cards from the market for half cost. You know, he sees the card that can really hurt. He can spend two. This is in the zero, one, two, four column here. He can spend two gold, which he knows this money's gonna go to Don Luis. So he spends two gold, gives it to Don Luis. That speculation cube goes back in to Don Luis's speculation pool. And he's gonna buy this. Now that he's spent for half price, he buys this Banditos card. He's gonna hang on to that. That is one action. Now, Pascual Roscoe is gonna use this orange card on his friend over here. This orange card is called Red Battalions. <clears throat> First thing we do when he does, plays this is he uses an action, spends one gold, that goes to the bank. What it does first is it steals three gold. He's gonna play this on the ranch. He's sending the Red Battalions over to the ranch and what they're gonna do is raid the ranch, create some unrest and steal gold. He can play this because the district matches. This is a Chihuahua district, and this would work on a Chihuahua district or Sonora district. He's gonna steal three gold from Don Luis. Now Don's thinking, I should have probably bought that card, but he didn't. It's going to put four unrest tokens, which is harsh. He's gonna get four unrest tokens on his ranch which means anytime there's unrest, uh, the income on that is not generated, or if you upgraded the connection, that's no longer valid until that unrest is removed. So he just hurt uh, Don Luis pretty bad. So he four unrest tokens, steals three, and then switches our regime over to anarchy. So we find the anarchy card. And this one is gonna change the economy a little bit. This says all troops have jurisdiction in any district. So, and it's gonna change our economy there. So we'll put that back out here. Everything changes to anarchy. It doesn't really affect too much at this point. The last thing on this red battalions card is it's got an outrage point that's upside down. That is called a victim awarded point. And that's gonna go into Don Luis Terrazas's victim or his prestige stack. So he gets a point for that. Caused a lot of harm, but now he's got an outrage point out there. All right, so that's two act actions for Pascual Orozco. And last thing he's gonna do is just use a speculation cube. Might as well, someone's gonna buy one of these cards out here. And he sees this anti-saloon league card that looks pretty, pretty good. So he sticks a red cube on that. No headline cards to discard. Refresh the market. 
and then he collects two gold for his income cubes out here. So he made out like a bandit. <laughs> Moving on to Bernardo Reyes. Bernardo has his ability is he can buy troops from the market for half cost. So Bernardo says, I need to generate some income. He goes over here to the market, looks at this mine next to these other cards and says, hmm, that's in Sonora that would cost me six to play later on. Or I have one that is another mine. So he decides to spend, this is a zero, one, and two cost column. So he's gonna spend two gold and pick up this mine here. So he uses an action, spends gold, picks up a mine that goes into his hand. He doesn't have enough to play that card. So he's gotta decide what else to do. If he buys another card from the market, it's gonna use two actions. He looks at the current regime and it's anarchy. So he might buy this troop here using two more actions. He's gonna pick this troop up. Now this is in the one cost column and he's got his ability to get troops for half cost rounded up. So he's not gonna get a deal here. Already getting a deal for one gold, but no extra bonus. So he takes the troops, adds them to his hand. He's used three actions. Now I go to discarding headline cards. There's none in the zero column. And then we just refresh the market. So everything becomes cheaper and slides down. And then we replenish with two cards. And we got a partner that came out in another troop. And then Bernardo Reyes looks at that troop and says, wow, maybe I could buy that later on. Moving on, uh, Bernardo gets two gold for his income, for his two loyalty cubes. Now we go on to Mr. Carenza. His special ability is he can buy black cards from the market for zero gold. We got a couple out there right now. He's more interested right now in just trying to generate some income. So Bernardo is gonna buy this mine says, I need an enterprise that's cheap. I can get that for one gold. So he uses an action, spends a gold. Don Luis is out here, uses one action to buy the Indian fighters and gets Bernardo over here shaken a little bit because he's got a mine that these Indian fighters could target. Spends one action that was free because it was in the zero cost column. That speculation cube produced nothing for Bernardo. So Don Luis purchases his card. The mine from Bernardo Reyes is in a Snorin district and you can get there by Pack Mule as a local troop. So Mr. Don Luis Terrazas is going to use his second action, spend three gold, and deploy these troops on the mine. And he's gonna extort the mine. And when this is first played, first thing you do is you can switch this over. It's gonna change everything to martial law as shown on this card. And then place an unrest on the other enterprises in the district. And the district is Sonora. There are no other enterprises for Sonora out on the table. So martial law comes into play. Mines are still worth two gold, or I mean, still worth two cubes. And don't think it's really gonna affect too much. Our economy goes down um, to two, and then police action costs zero gold on this one. So if you take a police action to remove unrest, zero gold, even if you don't have a troop on that enterprise. The other thing we do when these local troops come in here is they are, they're gonna extort this mine. One of the yellow cubes is removed and then Don Luis takes his black cube and then places it right next to the yellow cube. Tells us that this is his local troop. He get, he's gonna collect one gold during his, during his income phase. He also has a command point. This command point here belongs to Don Luis, does not belong to Bernardo. Third action we're gonna take right now is Mr. Don Luis is going to take and he's gonna place a speculation cube 
over here. He's gonna place his cube on this mine, thinking someone else might wanna buy it. That's gonna end his turn. And we're gonna refresh the market. It's gonna get close to the end of his turn. We refresh the market, takes out a smelter, and then Mr. Don Luis collects his gold. He's got five here, plus one over here for six gold. Sitting pretty. He also has an outrage point and a command point now. Moving on, we go over to Pasquale Orozco over here. Pasquale Orozco's in jail. He would only get two actions if he has his whole turn when he's in jail. If he decides to get out of jail, he'll get his three actions. So for his first action, he's gonna exit or get out of jail. That's a police action. Since we're in martial law, police action costs zero gold. Normally it would cost three. So he's gonna get out of jail for one action and now has his other two actions left. He's got no cards out there, but has a pot of gold here. He needs to get something going. He's had a lot of things stripped away. He's looking out here at this gun store. He likes orange cards for sure, and a gun store would earn him extra gold for playing orange cards. So he's going to do one thing, and that's going to be purchase the gun store. That's going to give Bernardo Reyes here one gold because he had his speculation cube on it. He buys it for one gold, adds this to his hand. For second action, he's gonna play the gun store. And this is an American district. You have to, troops get there on boot. It's got one upgraded connection for one. So Bernardo Reyes has to, he's done with his three actions, and then he is going to refresh the market. We get a mill out here and then he's going to collect his income one two three four five six seven and then one over here is eight he's getting up there mr carenza here is looking out here and first thing he wants to do is buy this gun store get a card in his hand and the cube generates no income speculation cube for don luis generates no income He's going to play his gun store for a second action, and that costs seven gold. Plays his gun store. The other thing, gun stores typically have a very cheap connection, and he's going to own the connection, and that's Pack Mule. And he's going to pay one for that. He also got the cube I forgot to put on for the gun store. Now if there's any orange cards played, he'll generate two gold as well. That's two, three actions done. Bought the card, played it from his hand, and upgraded the connection. His turn's done, except he's gotta refresh the market. Topple card's getting cheaper. We got a plantation that came out, which is good. Needed some of those. And then also he generates income. One, two, three, four, five, six. And nothing else out there. Six gold, and his turn's done. Then we move on to Don Luis. It would be, it would cost nine gold to remove all those unrest tokens right now. Hmm. So he's studying, and the card in his hand is a Copper Queen. Maybe he's just gonna let go of that for a minute and play his Copper Queen. So. He's gonna wait for the regime to possibly change to martial law or someone to extort that and help him out. Um, Copper Queen he plays, it's gonna cost nine. And it's got a link rail, a chain link connection for rail on it, which is a good one. It costs 10 on this Copper Queen, but you know we'll see if he can buy that sometime later. Someone else can. What the chain link rail connection does is it allows you to upgrade any connection for one gold later on in the game. If you own a, a chain link connection, rail connection, and there's no unrest on there, then you can purchase a um, upgraded connection for one gold rather than the cost that's on it. 
This is a mine, so it's going to go to the PAX regime of two. So he places two cubes. He's starting to run out of cubes. And now has a mine out there, an American mine. One action to buy the card, or play, play the card from his hand. He's going to sell one card. For second action, he sells a card to get three gold. It's a card he wasn't thinking he'd be able to use. Get this theater. This might be another enterprise he can play next turn. So he used three actions. Refreshes the market. The topple card is getting cheaper. And then earns income. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oops, don't count these. It got unrest on them. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven income. So he's not generating an, as much because of the unrest. When you want to think about top one DS, you have to know what type of prestige point it takes to defeat him, depending on the regime. Let's look at the regimes first and see what type of prestige point is needed to take it down. During Pax Perferiana, you can flip over the card and see that you would force Diaz into retirement if your loyalty is greater than the tripartite. Now the tripartite is Diaz's score of loyalty on the back of this card. It always starts at two and it can be modified by the other players. You take that plus the loyalty of the lowest two opponents that you have Add those together. If your loyalty is greater, you would win the game. Number two here is martial law. For martial law, you can flip that over and see that that would force a coup d'etat. That means you need to have more command than the tripartite. For U.S. intervention, that one would force a U.S. annexation of Mexico, which didn't happen, by the way, but we can say it possibly make it happen in this game. And that would be your outrage would have to be greater than the tripartite. And the last one is anarchy. And for anarchy, you would force a free election where you would need revolution uh, points for your prestige points greater than the tripartite. So now that we know what it would take, you also have to have a topple card work its way through the market. When the player purchases a topple card, the player to his or her left you take the current regime and they have the possibility to modify Diaz's points. In this case, I had Anarchy up, that was a current regime. I'd flip that over and see that Diaz's revolution is two plus the lowest two uh, revolution points of the lowest two opponents. We would add those together. But the player to the left has the first option. He can flip over his Hasendado card and take on one of the two possible sides on the back in, in this case, let's say Mr. Carenza flipped his card, he would have a secret, almost like a secret revolution point that he could play there. He loses the two income cubes from the loyalty side, and now he's taking revolution. So he would have another prestige point for revolution, and then he could, if he had any cards out there that would modify Diaz's total, he could play those. That same thing happens as it goes around the table. They can flip their Hasendado card, or play modifiers to Diaz's total. Then players would see if they can beat the part tripartite. If a player can, they would win the game. If more than two players can beat the tripartite, then the player out of those two with the most gold would win the game. And if this was the fourth topple card that came through the market, if the players if one of the players bought this topple card and it's the fourth one and nobody can beat the tripartite then the player with the greatest amount of gold would win the game. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned the game. Check out moderntablegamer.com where you can find videos like these and videos from other videographers teaching games. So hopefully you find the game that you're looking for and can learn it instantly. So hope you like this video. And remember, if you're not playing games at least once a week, the planets won't align and will never achieve world peace. Take care.
Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Boop. Boop.